ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير واشهد ان محمدا عبد الله ورسوله وصفي من خلقه وحبيبه بلغ الرساله وادى الامانه ونصح الامه وكشف الله به الغمة وصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين قال الله تعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعض إن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ونعوذ بالله تعالى من النار ثم أما بعد uh, as we've seen in the recent events uh, of past few months what has gone on in the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from natural disasters uh, economic difficulties uh, killing, displacement and the list goes on of uh, complaints that we have of what is going on in the Muslim Ummah. And of course, this seems to be even uh, more heightened in the past few weeks. As uh, was just announced, there was an earthquake in Afghanistan. A few thousand people have died. We previously had floods in Libya. We had earthquake in Morocco. And of course, in very recent uh, history, and what is continually, continuously going on right now uh, is the situation that has happened in Palestine in Gaza. So these are times uh, where it's good for us to reflect as the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to think about our brothers and sisters. As Rasulullah says in the hadith, that the believer to the other, his fellow believer, they're like a building. They're like a building, a structure that supports each other. So we have our brothers and sisters who are in different parts of the world. They speak different uh, a different language. The culture is different. The nationality is different. But what bonds us together is that we all say La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. And this is the one thing that unites us together. And Rasulullah says in the hadith, مَثَلُ المؤمن, المؤمنين فِي تَوَادِهِمْ وَتَرَاحُمِهِمْ وَتَعَاطُفِهِمْ مَثَلُ الْجَسَدِ that the example of the believers in their mutual affection and their mercy and their love towards each other is like the body, like the human body. That when one part of the body is ill and feels a complaint, that the entire body reacts and the entire body is affected and a person is not able to sleep and the fever comes and it affects the entire body if one part of that body is affected. And so this is how the believers are when they hear that there is difficulties and calamities that are befalling their fellow brothers and sisters in different parts of the world. So situations like this uh, is an opportunity for a lot of self-reflection because when uh, difficulties happen, when calamities strike, what tends to happen is that people uh, they start to question and they start to have a lot of questions and they start to forget who they are. And we start to forget who we are as the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so situations like this is an opportunity for us to reflect and remind ourselves uh, who we are as the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you consider uh, a world champion fighter, world champion fighter has all the belts, has all the titles, and he gets into the ring and he takes a beating in one of the rounds and he gets battered up and what happens what starts to go through that person's mind that fighter's mind he starts to lose his confidence starts to doubt starts to feel like he's going to lose 
And so when he goes back to his corner, he goes back to his corner, and he meets with his team and his trainers, what do they tell him? Before they talk about strategy, you need to improve on this, you need to do this, you need to avoid this. Before they do any of that, what they're gonna tell him, they're gonna try to build back his confidence. So they're gonna tell him, you are the best. You're the champion. This is who you are. Your opponent is not on your level. And they're gonna try to build back his confidence and remind him who he is. And so in these times of difficulty and calamity that befalls the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we need to remind ourselves who we are as the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So let's look at the Quran and let Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala remind us who we are as the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah says in the Quran, كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَلِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ Allah reminds us who we are. You are, O Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you are the best nation, the best Ummah that has been brought out from mankind. You command what is good, and you forbid what is evil, and you believe in Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. This is who we are. We are the best nation. All the other nations before us have come and gone, and we are the last Ummah, but we are the best Ummah as the testimony of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala confirms. Our Prophet is who? Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The best of all creation The leader of all, um, all of mankind As Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in the hadith Ana sayyidu waladi adam wa la fakh That I am the leader of all of uh, mankind All of the children of Adam And this is not boasting He says this is not boasting This is something that needs to be said We would not know this otherwise unless he tells us so he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I am the leader of all of mankind. I am the leader of all of mankind. And he is the best of all prophets and all, all messengers of all humankind. Or rather, he's the best of all creation. The best of all creation. This is our prophet. This is our prophet. And our book is the Quran, the Kitabullah. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ خَدْ جَاءَتْكُمْ مَوْعِذَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَشِفَاءٌ لِمَا فِي الصُّدُورِ وَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةً لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ Oh mankind, it has come to you a reminder and a healing for what is in the hearts and a guidance and a mercy for the believers. This is our book. A book which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised to protect that will never ever be changed. إِنَّا نَحْنُ نَزَّلْنَا ذِكْرِ وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِذُونَ We have indeed revealed the remembrance, the Qur'an, and we will guard it from any protect, uh, corruption. This Qur'an is protected as opposed to all the previous scriptures which have been changed and altered and manipulated to the point where they are no longer reliable as the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are the largest nation, we're the largest ummah that has come from the time of Adam alayhi salam until Yawm al-Qiyamah. Rasulullah says in the hadith that all of the nations were presented to me. All of the nations were presented to him. And he saw a huge nation. And he asked, is this my ummah? And they said, no, this is the ummah of Musa. And then they told him to look, look around. And he looks to his right and he looks to his left. And he sees filling the horizon a huge swath of people. And they tell him that this is your ummah. Amongst which 70,000 will enter into paradise without any reckoning. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. May Allah make us from amongst them. This is the ummah which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that will never unite upon misguidance. In the ummati la tajtami'u ala dalala. That this nation, this ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it was protected from ever gathering together on misguidance. This is not a guarantee that was given to the previous nations. And so they gathered on misguidance until they fell into complete misguidance. But the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu has been protected. We will never gather upon misguidance. This does not, does not mean that some individuals, select individuals will go astray. That is possible. But the Ummah collectively will never ever unite upon misguidance. We are a balanced nation. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا We have thus thus made you a balanced nation. Balanced nation. We are the first to enter paradise. We're the last, but we're also the first. As Rasulullah says in hadith, نَحْنُ الْآخِرُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ We're the last. We came last. 
But we will be the first to enter. نَحْنُ أَوَّلُ مَنْ يَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةِ We will be the first nation to enter into paradise. And the first nation to be called into account, even though we came last. And we will make up the majority of the people of paradise. Rasulullah says in a hadith that, are you pleased to be a fourth of the people of paradise? And they said, yes, we are pleased that we can be a fourth. And then he said, are you pleased to be a half, half of the people of paradise? And they said, yes. And then Rasulullah said that, I hope that you will be half of the people of paradise. Half of the people of paradise will be the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. This is a nation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed and has favored in that one of the greatest messengers will pray behind a person from this ummah. Rasulullah sallallahu says in a hadith, كَيْفَ أَنْتُمْ إِذَا نَزَلَ ابْنُ مَرْيَمْ وَفِيكُمْ إِمَامُكُمْ فِيكُمْ إِمَامُكُمْ مِنْكُمْ How will you be when Isa ibn Maryam descends and he comes down towards the end of time and the time of salah has commenced? And they start to put forward Isa alayhi salam. You lead the salah. You are a prophet. You are a messenger. You are min ulul azmi min rusul The five messengers of strong will. And Isa alayhi salam will say no. He will say to the imam, taqaddam fa innaha lak uqimat. That uh, go forward. You go forward. He will say to the imam. And many of the scholars say that this imam is none other than al-imam al-mahdi. The rightly guided imam who will come towards at the end of time. Isa alayhi salam will say, go forward. Because for you, this salah was established. And he will lead Isa alayhi salam in the salah. So we are an ummah who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored with Islam. When we have calamities and we have difficulties, it's not a time to hang our, our, our to drag our heads and put our heads down. This is an ummah that Allah has blessed and Allah has put glory and izzah. And this can never be taken away as long as we remain committed to our faith. As the statement of Umar radiallahu an, the famous statement of Umar radiallahu an, where he says, نَحْنُ قَوْمٌ أَعَزَنَ اللَّهُ بِالْإِسْلَامِ That we are a people who Allah has honored by Islam. فَمَهْمَا اَبْتَغَيْنَا الْعِزَّةِ فِي غَيْرِهِ أَذَلَنَ اللَّهِ But if we seek uh, glory and if we seek izza in other than Islam, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will disgrace us. اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا يوافي نعمه ويكافئ مزيدا حمدا طيبا مباركا فيه وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الله سبحانه وتعالى has chosen this ummah Allah has blessed this ummah Allah has favored this ummah as we mentioned and there's many many different ayat and hadith about the favors and blessings of this ummah of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم so the question comes up if this is the chosen ummah if this is the ummah that Allah has blessed and He's chosen and he has given all these favors and virtues too, then why do we see all of these trials and difficulties and calamities are befalling the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Shouldn't the red carpet be rolled out? We are the best Ummah. You are the best nation that has come out from mankind. So shouldn't everything be smooth sailing and everything be easy and we should be given that honor in this dunya? The answer is, if you look at the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, let Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explain to us what it means for us to be the best nation. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in hadith, Ummati hadihi ummatun marhuma, that this nation of mine is a nation that has been granted mercy. Laysa alayha adabun fil akhirah. It will not have punishment in the akhirah. The akhirah is where we will receive what we deserve as the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They will not have punishment in the Akhirah. Individually, there's some individuals who might be punished in the Akhirah, but collectively, the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will be saved in the Akhirah. As for this dunya, عذابها في الدنيا. Its punishment is in the dunya. Al-fitan, 
والزلازل والقتل trials tribulations zalazil natural disasters al-qatl killing these are things that will have and will continue to afflict the ummah of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so this ummah has not been guaranteed that we will be safe from calamities and trials and tribulations they will come and they will continue to come but we have to realize that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his wisdom has decreed this we are not uh, the only thing we have been guaranteed is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not completely destroy the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the only thing we have been guaranteed. It comes in the hadith that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, سَأَلْتُ رَبِّي لِأُمَّتِي ثَلَاثًا I asked my Lord for my Ummah three things. فَأَعْطَانِي إِثْنَتَيْنِ وَمَنَعَنِي وَاحِدًا That he gave me two of them and he did not grant me the third. سَأَلْتُهُ أَلَّا يَهْلِكَ أُمَّتِي بِسَنَةٍ عَامَّةٍ I ask my Lord that he do not allow my ummah to perish by a drought. That they not perish, perish by a drought or any other natural disaster. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted that. Granted that to me. وَسَأَلْتُهُ أَلَّا يُسَلِّطْ عَلَيْهِمْ عَدُوًا مِنْ غَيْرِهِمْ And I asked him that he does not allow an outside enemy to come and destroy us. فَأَعْطَانِيهَا and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted that to me. وَسَأَلْتُهُ أَلَّا يَجْعَلَ بَأْسَهُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ فَمَنَعَنِيهَا And I asked him that he do not make us fight amongst each other and have issues and problems amongst each other. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his wisdom did not grant that. So the ummah has been protected from total destruction. But partial destruction is possible. Natural disasters can affect part of the ummah. It will never destroy the entire ummah. Natural disasters or outside enemy can, atten, uh, can attack and destroy part of the ummah. But the entire ummah has been protected from that. And this is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يُرِيدُونَ لِيُطْفِئُوا نُورَ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَاهِهِمْ They seek to put out the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَاللَّهُ مُتِمُّ نُورِهِ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْكَافِرُونَ But Allah will preserve His light and perfect His light even if the disbelievers detest it. Despite whatever happens, Whatever happens, whatever propaganda, whatever uh, negative portrayal of the Muslims that is given, Islam continues to increase. The Muslims, people continue to accept Islam. You look, and you can go on YouTube, and you can see all the different people accepting and coming to Islam every single day. And people continue to accept the religion and enter into Islam in waves. هو الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كل على الدين كله. He is the one who has sent his messenger with the religion of truth so that it may become supreme over all other religions, even if the idolaters detest it. So this is the promise of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. And we have to remember that in times of difficulty, there will always come ease after that. During the very beginning. Uh, of the da'wah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and this was a very very difficult time people were being tortured people were being killed and they were complaining to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they said to Rasulullah Allah tastansir lana ala tad'u lana would you not seek Allah's help for us would you not make dua to Allah for us for him to help us and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam responded he said that before you in the nations before you a person will be brought and they would cut him in half, completely in half. Another person will be brought, and they would bring an iron comb and pull out his flesh and separate his flesh from his bones. But he would not turn back on his religion. And then Rasulullah says in the hadith, continuing in the same hadith, that a time will come, a time will come when a person, a rider, will ride from Sana'a to Hadramaut. They will ride from Sana'a city in Yemen to Hadramaut another city in Yemen, and they will not fear anyone, لا يخاف إلا الله They will not fear anyone except for Allah, والغنم, and والذب على غنبه And they will fear the, 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 the wolf attacking their flock of sheep. The only thing they will fear. And this was the promise of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and less than 20 years later, this came true. And the entire Arabia became under the uh, rule of the Muslims. So when trials and tribulations come, this is a time for us to reflect and remind ourselves that we are the Ummah of Muhammad that Allah has promised us victory. Questions will come up. 
Allah mentions in the Quran, Am hasibtum an tadkhul janna wa lamma ya'tikum mathalu alladhina khalaw min qablikum. Do you think that you will enter paradise and you will not be afflicted with what came to those before you? Masathum al ba'sa'u wa dharra'u wa zulzilu. Trials and tribulations and afflictions came to them and they were shaken. Hatta yaqul al-rasul wa alladhina amanu ma'a mata nasrullah. Until even the messenger amongst them and the believers with him even they started to ask mata nasrullah when is the victory going to come and allah says ala inna nasrullahi qareeb verily the victory is near so in times of setbacks and difficulties we need to put our trust in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remember that the promise of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is true there's no bigger setback in the seerah of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam than what happened during the battle of uhud during the battle of uhud in which there was a resounding victory at the beginning and then a disaster at the end. And at the end of that battle, Abu Sufyan, radiallahu anhu, who was not a Muslim at that time, he was a mushrik, he comes to where the believers are, are uh, gathered together and he starts to ask them, boast, and looking to provoke them and get a response for them. So he asks them, Afil qawmi Muhammad is amongst the people of Muhammad. Rasulullah said, do not answer him. And then he asks, Afil Qawm ibn Abi Quhafa is amongst the people, Ibn Abi Quhafa, who is Abu Bakr. Rasulullah said, La tujibu, do not answer him. And then he asked, Afil Qawm Umar ibn Khattab is amongst them, Umar ibn Khattab. And Rasulullah said, do not answer him. Because he knows that he is trying to goad them, he's trying to provoke them. And Rasulullah is teaching the companions that we need to be principled and we're not going to allow ourselves to be dragged into tit for tat and, 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 and argumentation between uh, us and our enemies. So he told them, do not respond. And then Abu Sufyan said that if these people are alive, then they would have responded. They've all been killed. Upon that, Umar he could not control himself. And so he yelled out, Kadabta ya Allah, you have lied, O enemy of Allah. Everyone you have mentioned is alive. Everyone who you mentioned is still alive. And then Abu Sufyan begins to boast and he begins to brag. And he said, U'lu Hubal. Raise Hubal. Hubal was one of their idols. And then Rasulullah said to them, Ala tujibuhu. Will you not answer them? Before he told them, don't answer. Now he told them, answer. And so they said, what shall we answer? And he said, Qulu Allahu a'la wa ajal. Say, Allah is supremely high, most supremely, supremely high and most magnificent. And then Abu Sufyan responded, Inna lana al-uzza wa la uzza lakum. We have uzza, another idol of theirs. And Rasulullah told them, Ajibuhu, answer him. And they, they asked him, what should we say? And he said, Qulu Allahu mawlana wa la mawla lakum. That Allah is our protector and you have no protector. Allah is our protector and you have no protector. And so this was the response that the Muslims gave to Abi Sufyan. And years later, less than 10 years later, Hubal and Uzza and all these other idols and false deities were destroyed one by one by Rasulullah and by the Sahaba as they went and conquered Mecca and he took the axe and he destroyed all of them one by one and Rasulullah entered into the Kaaba and as he was destroying these idols he was saying the verse وَقُلْ جَاءَ الْحَقُّ وَزَهَقَ الْبَاطِلِ and say the truth has come and falsehood has perished so whenever these uh, calamities befall the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we need to remind ourselves that uh, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala is in control and Allah has his wisdom behind what he decrees and we remember that everything belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala including the land that we walk on that this earth it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say to Allah belongs the dominion he gives it to whoever he wills and he can take it from whoever he wills he might give it to a disbeliever one day and he will take it away after. <inaudible> that the earth belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he gives it to whoever he wills. <inaudible> but the end result and the end victory 
is for the believers. Allahumma aslih ahwalana wa tawalla amrana warham mawtana wa shfi mardana wa taqabbal shuhadaana wa astur awratina wa amin rawatina. Ya hayu ya qayyum bi rahmatika nastaghith aslih lana sha'nana kullah wa la tekilna ila anfusina turfata ayn. اللهم فارج الهم كاشف الغم مجيب دعوة المطرين رحمن الدنيا والآخرة ورحمهما أنت ترحمنا اللهم اللهم ارحمنا فإنك بنا راحم ولا تعذبنا فإنك علينا قادر واطلق بنا يا مولانا فيما جرت به المقادير اللهم انصر إخواننا في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم من أراد الإسلام والمسلمين خيرا فوافق لكل خير ومن أراد الإسلام والمسلمين شرا فبأسك لا يرد على القوم المجرمين ربنا لا تؤاخذنا بما نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلم تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد عباد الله رحمكم الله اتقوا الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله أعلى وأجل وأقيم الصلاة